This is God's house, and He is here today. He hears each song we sing and listens while we pray. Hi, everybody. It's Miss Beth coming to you from Faith Lutheran Church in Saginaw. And I have something to say to you today. Happy New Year! You might be thinking, Miss Beth, it's not New Year's Day. What are you talking about? But it is New Year's Day in the church. It's the beginning of a new church year. It's the start of a new church season. It's the season of Advent. Now, I know when you look around, you see a lot of Christmas stuff. But in the church, we have Advent first. And there's a really, 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 really good reason for that that we're going to talk about today when we worship. Before we get to that, though, you might notice something behind me. This is our Advent wreath. There's four candles on it. You can, Yeah, there you go. You can see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And each week we light another one. So this week, because it's the first week, there's only one candle lit back there. And we light it from one of the candles on the altar. You'll also notice behind me that our pyramids, those are the cloths that cover the altar, are blue. And as we look around and see different parts of the church during Advent, you'll see different things that get added each week. And the blue is the color of the season. So we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about the candles a little bit later. Right now, I'm going to turn things over to Pastor John for our story from the Bible. Happy Thanksgiving, friends. I hope you had a safe and a tasty Thanksgiving. And maybe you're still enjoying some leftovers, maybe? Hmm? Well, in addition to this being Thanksgiving weekend, it's also the first weekend of the season that we call Advent. Advent is a word that means coming, and we are four weeks away from the coming of Christmas. So I thought it would be fun to tell the story of Christmas, uh, not just today, but for the next several weeks. And I have a fun idea about how to do that. So let's go over to the church. Okay, I'm over here in the church with this really big box that I found down in the church basement. And this is what we're going to use to tell the Christmas story. So let me see what's inside. Oh, wow. Huh? Well, the first thing is a compass. Huh, okay, we'll get to that maybe. And then the next thing I find are some signs. First one says, Nazareth, north. Hmm. Next one says, the east. Okay. The next one says, a field near Bethlehem, west. And the last one says, Bethlehem, south. So I guess the first thing we have to do is figure out where these signs should go. And uh, I'll start with the first one. Nazareth, north. But I don't know which way is north. That's why there's a compass in here. I get it. Okay. So if I can get it off the box. I'm going to take this and lay it on the floor. And show you what I'm talking about. I'll zoom in on it. So you see that the north is pointing to the left, the west is pointing backwards, east is straight ahead, see if I pick it up, straight ahead is the altar, and south is to the right. So that should help us figure out where all the things so, go that are in the box. The first sign, Nazareth, north, it's going to go on a table right over there. I'll show you the table. It's kind of bright, but I'll go put this over there. Next one says the east. And that's the one we decided was back there by the fountain. Don't get dizzy. Ah, there it is. The 
The next one says, a field near Bethlehem, west. And that's going to be right behind me. So we're going to use the altar for that one. I'm going to move the camera so you can see me put it up there. And finally, the last one says, Bethlehem, south. And our compass says south is that way. So I'll take it over to another table, which is over by those windows right there. Now that we have all the signs put in the four different places, <clears throat> I can tell you what's in the box. It's all the figures for the Christmas story. Is it Christmas yet? No, it's still a ways off. But I'm going to take all these figures that are in this box and put them in the four different places that we've already set up to get the story ready to start. Do you remember where we started? What was the first place we put? Nazareth in the north. <clears throat> and um, do you know who started the Christmas story in Nazareth? I can tell you. You'll recognize them, I think. It's Mary and Joseph. So now I'm going to go take them and put them over there where they belong. Do you remember what the second sign was that we put up? It was the one that said the east, which is the one way in the back of the church. And you know who goes there? This one. This one, and this one, sometimes called We Three Kings, sometimes called the Wise Men, I like to call them the Magi, and I'm going to take them and put them on the back page. So the third sign we put up was the one that said, A field near Bethlehem west. And we decided that's going to be the altar behind me. And who goes there? Here's one. Here's two. the shepherds who stayed out in that field. But shepherds by themselves don't make any sense. So we also need their sheep. So let me go put them in. Finally, the last place we put was called Bethlehem South. We put it over by that window. And when the Christmas story began, none of the people that were going to end up in Bethlehem were there yet. <clears throat> but there were some things there. And the first one is really big. <clears throat> Take this out. Here is a stable. And so I'm going to take that over and put it on the table now. And the stable was probably not empty. Probably there was in the stable a cow. And we'll also say there was probably a donkey. And do you know what they eat from? They eat from something called a manger, which is the feed box for animals. And so I'll put those in the stable so they're ready for when it's time. <laughs> Now there are, yep, 
there's still a few things in the box, but they don't happen, they don't come into the Christmas story until a little later. So I'm going to leave them in there for now. Don't you think it would be fun to act out the whole story right now? It would be, but we're not. We're going to wait. We're going to wait and do it a little at a time for two reasons. Number one, the first Christmas did not happen all at once. It took quite a bit of time for everything to happen. And number two, while it's not always easy to do, it's good sometimes to have to wait for something and to be patient. Thank you, Pastor John, for sharing that story from the Bible. Now, let's take a few minutes here and talk about Advent. What it is and what it means and what we're doing. So, the word Advent means someone important is coming. So, since Advent is right now and it's before Christmas, who do you think is coming that's important? Could that someone be Jesus? I think so. That's actually what we're, what we're doing. We're getting ready to celebrate Jesus coming. It's very exciting. But it's not quite Christmas yet, is it? Now, if you look around outside of the church and wherever you're going and whatever you're looking at, it feels like it's Christmas. There's Christmas trees and Christmas decorations and you hear Christmas songs on the radio and you watch Christmas specials on TV and there's Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. But in the church we say, hold on a minute, it's not Christmas yet. You have to wait. Wait! Why do we have to wait? We don't like to wait. Right? You don't like to wait. I don't like to wait. When we're excited about something big happening and something exciting coming, we want it to be now. Oh, in fact, I'm going to show you. Watch. I'm going to wait to say my next thing for 10 seconds. Let's see how easy or hard it is for me to do. Here we go. Ready? Oh, that was a really long 10 seconds. So, if it's that hard to wait 10 seconds, imagine how hard it is to wait for Jesus. So, luckily, we don't just have to sit here and wait and be kind of bummed because we have to wait and it's not Christmas yet. Eh. No, we get ready because Jesus is coming. We get ready and we get ready in a strange way. We don't get ready necessarily only by putting up decorations or singing carols or talking about the Christmas story. We get our hearts ready for Jesus. And we do that by being loving and kind, by praying, by thanking God, by thanking Jesus, by talking to them, and by showing that kindness to others. So that when Christmas comes, we can just celebrate, celebrate, celebrate! Because it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. So we'll spend some more time over the next few weeks, because there's four weeks in Advent, we'll spend some time talking to you a little bit more about what to do while we wait. We'll see you soon. Pastor John's going to teach you some signs, and then I'll be back with the song. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes, maybe most of the time, the weeks leading up to Christmas can be hard. Uh, Christmas is so much fun in lots and lots of ways, but it's hard to wait, and it's hard to be patient, and those are our two signs for this week, wait and patient. The sign for wait is hold up two hands like this and just wiggle your fingers out in front of you. It's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, I'm waiting for something, I'm waiting for something. Uh, the sign for patient is pretty easy. Hold your hand with your thumb on the edge and run it down your chin. Patient. Patient. Now, I should mention that a lot of signs can change their meaning because of your eyes, your face, and your whole body. So, if uh, I should say to you, if you, if I was waiting for you and you finally came up and I, and I said, and you were worried that I was mad or something, I said, I only waited for a minute. I just might, you know, my face might look like that. And but if I have been waiting and waiting all day 
you see, you can use your face and your body to change the meaning to like waiting for a long time. Same thing as patient. I could say, I'm a patient person. Okay. But, oh, it's so hard to be patient waiting for Christmas. So if the patience is really tough on you, then you can change it with your face and all that. So wait and patient. All right. It's time for our song this week. And I am so excited this week because I get to teach you a waiting song. It's an Advent song. It's not a Christmas carol. Not yet. It's a song to sing while we wait. So it's called Wait for the Lord. Really easy, right? And we're going to use both the signs you just learned from Pastor John. We're going to use wait and we're going to use patience. So it's kind of a mix of the signs and then um, a couple movements at the end. Let me show you how it works. So um, it goes like this. It's wait for the Lord and then you make your L and your sash, right, for Lord whose day is near, that's where we'll put patience. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. That's all the words there are. And you may hear it if, you're, if your grown-ups around you watch um, the other service during church, because everybody in the church is singing this song during Advent. It's so good for the waiting. And it's kind of a slow song and a quiet song, because remember, while we're waiting, we're getting our hearts ready for Jesus. And it helps us remember to do that, to be quiet and to pray and to remember and to think. Ooh, it's such a great song. So here, I'll show you how it goes and we'll sing it together. Here's Wait for the Lord. worship God with our voices. Thank you so much. So as always, before we say goodbye, we'll have our prayer together. So repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. We are excited. We are excited that Christmas is coming. That Christmas is coming. Help us while we wait. Help us while and help us to be patient. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, be patient while you wait, and until next time, see ya. Bye.